Okay, Mr. Parker here to review one from MBD. This is House Rules for Bad Girls. And uh, I'll let me get into this. This movie basically follows a group of uh, a girls who are in like a halfway house sort of thing for, uh, you know, bad teens or angry teens, a group of girls. And uh, these, uh, a slasher or some sort of psychopath comes in and starts dropping off letters that are basically these rules that say don't uh, leave the premises, don't use phones. Or if they do, they are punished. Uh, the reason they decide to stay in the house is because somebody is kidnapped and uh, they do not know where. So the the kind of the leader of the lady is kind of having them stay in the house. Although I do think that they they did a terrible action in staying in the house, and I think that that's obvious. Uh, but as the film progresses uh, and after more things happen, you really start to wonder why they even still stayed in the house after everything. Uh, the acting in the movie can, in the, in, is fairly decent for the most part. In the very beginning, there's a scene that seems to be added on to the entire movie, uh, along with the credits, to spice up some sort of uh, nudity or sexual erotica, which really makes the film seem like a real... When it opened up, it felt like I was in some sort of softcore HBO Showtime uh, original porno or something like that. And as the film... And the really bad acting, but... Uh, as the film progresses on, uh, that's completely different, and the movie completely shifts gears into these teenage girls who have a bunch of angsty arguments and things like that, similar to the movie Bad Meat or something like that, or, uh, you know, what's well, uh, a couple movies with the girls and uh, guys and stuff in a little halfway house type deal, teenagers. But uh, this is all girls, and uh, there's obviously one who takes lead, and she's very angry. At points, I don't understand, like, sometimes they'll be laughing, uh one minute after somebody's just been hurt <coughs> about something else. It's just kind of odd. Uh, I think that uh, they did they did a fair job acting, but I'm not sure that the script should have called for the way they did act. But uh, as it progresses, uh, the girls have to come together to fight or survive against the killer. Uh, the killer is obvious who it is, I knew right away, because there's not many actors in the movie. Uh, there's... Really, like I said, not many uh, actresses or people in this you would maybe recognize. Uh, Amy Dolans and, of course, Nick Chinlin. Uh, Nick Chinlin's an uh, exceptional actor. He's in the movie Con Air for a little bit. He's in Con Air. He's in uh, Eraser. He's in Training Day. He's in Chronicles of Riddick. Very recognizable guy. Really raspy voice. Uh, really good actor. Like I said, uh, he plays a cop in the movie. Uh, there's not really any gore in the movie. There is some awful, awful, awful CGI. Uh, that I thought was atrocious. I don't know. At, at points, it seemed like it might have been going for some sort of special effect uh, deal. Like to, I know, like obviously it's a special effect, but I meant like a special way because the CGI blood kind of stayed in the air after it was done. I don't know if they were going for that, but I, I'm not a big fan of CGI, especially uh, that kind of CGI, and especially blood splatter CGI, and especially when it doesn't look good at all. But uh, that's just me. You know, some people can get over it. Uh, some of the practical effects, although very min minimal, were actually pretty decent and pretty uh, good. There's no like. No, nothing to ride home about on gore here. But, uh, you know, I did enjoy a couple of the characters. I enjoyed the, the quiet, mousy girl. I thought she was a good actress. I thought she was cute, and I thought she did a very good job. Hey, Rebecca. None of your business. Hey, Jason. Books. You brought more books. You were the best. <laughs> I did, in fact, but actually they're not from me. They're from Claudia's old books from when she was your age. I just got them out of storage. For me. For everyone. Yeah, right. Like any of them read. <laughs> Slow down there, kiddo. Do you have enough points for books? Claudia. Claudia, nothing. No points, no book. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, like I said, they all do a decent job. It's just that I think the movie's uh, fairly generic and very predictable, and uh, I don't believe the per people's actions. And it's, it's kind of, a, I guess, a fairly serious idea. It is a good uh, concept. I would say the concept is cool about the killer dropping rules off and things like that, uh, and he's all dressed in white, and uh, he's kind of like the purity guy trying to cleanse the girls. I, I thought the killer was cool. I thought the concept was cool. I thought the execution was not so great. But, uh... Also, there's this character in there that's just completely a uh, whack job. She's uh, kind of like this assistant helper of the girls, and she's just completely out there. Uh, your typical uh, old-school, like, nun-type deal. You guys are filthy pigs, blah, blah, blah. She's kind of a comical character, which is kind of odd. She doesn't really fit, but she does an all right job. But uh, that is House Rule for Bad Girls. If this sounds like it's something you'd like, check it out. Uh, I can't really recommend it, like I said, but I can't really uh, say that anybody will not enjoy this. Uh, some people may enjoy this. The, very be the, the beginning is nothing like the movie. It's really, really odd and uh, kind of out of place. Seemed like uh, maybe the credits could fit, I guess, but the opening scene is just very odd. I think it was uh, shot later and edited in, you know, to catch people's attention at the beginning of the film. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.